Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another vodcast with English with Joseph. Um, today, we're going to talk about the word will. I've had a few comments from you that will is something you find quite confusing because a lot of the older textbooks show will as being in the future. Now, yes, will is in the future, but that's not the only use of the word will. So today we're going to talk a little bit about using the word will. I think one good thing to remember is that when we talk about the future, we don't always use will. In fact, we can't always use will. In a future event, will is something which is set in stone. I will do that in five minutes, for example. Other ways of using the future tense are things like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do that for you, or I shall do that for you. So will is not always appropriate. Will is a very strong affirmative statement in the future. I will. It's got a lot of strength to it, and it can sometimes seem a little bit aggressive for the English mind, especially if it's presented in a strong way. You know that English people, we are a little bit gentle. We don't like too much strong language. So to say something like, yep, yeah, I will do that is fine. But to put something really into strong, aggressive terms, you will help me, can be a little bit too aggressive. Anyway, as I was saying, will has some other uses as well. Let's start off with the future. Okay, so I will see you tomorrow. If I see John, I will tell him. Next year, I will be 46. Sadly, that's true. Um, okay, so Luther's statement for will is 100% future statements. Okay? However, we sometimes use will to talk about things which are happening now. Let me give you an example. My car won't start. Well, that means my car will not start. I'm sitting here trying it and I have a problem with it. My car won't start. It's a statement using will about the present. I'm not saying my car won't start tomorrow. I'm talking about it now. My car will not start. That's one use of the future in the present. And also if the phone's ringing, oh, I'll get it. I'll answer the phone, don't worry. You're talking about what you're doing now. So it's a bit strange that we use the future. I suppose I will answer that really is the future because you're going to do it now. You're on your way to do it. You haven't done it. But it's a bit strange. My car won't start and I'll answer that even if the phone is right next to you and you're doing it now. Another one is, will you have another cup of tea? So rather than say, would you like, you can say, will you have another cake, another cup of tea? So again, I'm asking what you want now. So you can see a bit of a crossover between the future and the present by using will. A lot of people haven't thought about this, but maybe the best example here in what we're talking about is my car won't start. Of course, you could be saying, yep, I've tried it many times and it won't start in the future, so let's forget about it. But you're talking about them at this moment, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to be late. My car won't start. It will not start. It's a bit of a strange thing to say, and to be honest with you, I don't know why we use the future tense in this way, because it is a present statement where we're using will, so it's not really the future. That's one example of the way we use will. 
we also use will in the present for requests and invitations. Oh, I'll help you with that. Will you help me? I suppose you are asking to be helped in a moment or in a few moments, but it's still the present, which is a bit strange. So we use will often in the present tense. We also use will for threats. I'll remember this. You upset me, I'll remember that. Or you've done something to upset me. I won't forget that, you know. <laughs> so, I suppose, again, it's talking about the future, but you're talking about how you feel right now. Oh, he won't listen to me. He won't listen. I've tried talking to him. So, in that case, you're actually talking about the past. Oh, he won't listen to me. You could say he didn't listen to me, but you're making a general statement. He won't listen to me. He won't listen to me. Okay? So these are some ways in which we use will um, in the present. We also use will to insist on something. For example, you know, he will smoke when I'm with him and I really don't like that. So you're talking about something he always does. If you're referring to a past event, you would say, oh, he was smoking when I was with him and I didn't like it. But if you're talking to a, 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 someone in a car who always does this, it's a bit like the conditional, because you would say, oh, when he smokes, I really don't like it. So you know that conditional of using the, the zero conditional, if this happens, that happens, if he smokes, I'm not happy. When he smokes, I don't like it. It's something like that. It's something like that. Oh, he will insist on smoking, and I don't. I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay, so that's another use of will. Um, we already spoke about won't. My car won't start. He won't listen to reason. Uh, you can use as well when you're talking about people insisting. You can also use will to forecast or deduce what a future event is. For example, the phone's ringing. That will be Mark. That will be Mark. Um, I suppose he'll want us to start without him, so we'll begin the meeting. Okay, so you can see again why this is a little bit confusing. So let's just go over what we've been talking about. The word will can be used in the future, and that's its purpose. But it can also be used to talk about the present and what's happening now. My car won't start. My car will not start. Okay, being one example. Um, I'll remember this. I'll remember this. So it's another way of saying I won't forget that. You know. So with won't in particular, I think we've discovered that we can talk about the present. Um, we also mentioned that. Um, Will refers to events in the present, okay, my car won't start, uh, I'll answer the phone. Um, we can also use will in the present when we're talking about willingness or willpower, okay. If you can imagine my girlfriend is too angry, I've tried everything uh, and I'm really exhausted to make her okay. You know, for example, my girlfriend is very angry and I'm really exhausted. I've tried everything to make her okay. But imagine that sentence as my girlfriend won't stop crying and I've tried everything. Um, okay, so that would be will not. So you can see there's a, a connection there. It's another way of speaking about the present tense, especially if something has been continuing for a length of time. Um, also for repetitive actions, we were talking about the, the zero conditional, where we say if that happens, this happens. If you heat water, it boils. We can also say, oh, he will keep talking to me. He just doesn't shut up. And you're talking there about repetitive actions as well, okay, from the past and present. Okay, so we spoke about it being used 
to refer to present actions. We also spoke about it being used to re for requests and orders. Will you help me? Oh, I'll help you. One moment. Okay. Well, there's a bit of a hint to the future there, even if it is only in a few minutes. And the other common one is for habit. Um, uh, every day my car won't start, for example. Every day my car won't start. Or he will keep smoking, and I hate it, as we spoke about a moment ago. Uh, and finally, we spoke about deduction. Okay, so um, the phone's ringing, that'll be Mark. You're deducing, you're forecasting who it's going to be, and you use will for that as well. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful for you today. Um, it's a little bit unusual, a little bit unusual. So I'm about to start my uh, working uh, week. This is Monday, and in half an hour, I will begin with my first lesson. So I'm looking forward to that. In my spare time, I'm also learning Dutch. That's a hard language. It just seems you just spit at people. <laughs> Um, so that's what I'm doing uh, these days. And if you are Dutch and you would like to practice with me, of course, you can drop me a note and we'll talk. Although my Dutch is horrendous. I often wonder why they call it Dutch, because in English we call it Dutch, but everyone else in Europe calls German Deutsch. Okay, so for example, for us, Germans speak German. The Netherlands speaks Dutch. But in other parts of Europe, the language of Germany, Deutschland as they call it in Germany, is Deutsch. So you have Deutsch and Dutch. It's a bit confusing, no? A bit confusing, and it certainly confused me in the past. Uh, so Dutch is a language of the Netherlands, and of course some people refer to that country as Holland. So that's what I'm doing in my spare time. Uh, I'm hoping also to get back into my piano playing. I haven't done that for a long time. I'm hoping maybe to get an hour today to get back to my piano. Uh, next week I'll be going to Scotland, my home country, for a few days. I think next weekend I'm going, uh, on March 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> a lot of drunk people in Scotland on that day, I think. Um, so next weekend, I think from Thursday until probably Monday there won't be many video clips. I'll try and do some video clips in advance. I think there's a way in Daily Motion I can set it so that it will publish them in advance. But I'm not very technical, so I'll have to work out how that works. Okay, so anyway, have a good day, and I hope to see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.